Praise the Lord, church. It's going to be the scripture here. Matthew chapter 6. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures here on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters, for either you will hate the one and love the other, or else you will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. God bless. The splendor of the King, robed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He
church a couple announcements here first just want to say we are still going to continue having our online services if anything will change just um just look out for posts on any social media but also look for messages from the ministry team uh, you can continue giving your tithes and your offerings to our website www.thepgja.org also you can can give the tithes and offerings to PayPal if you have that. You can reach out to Sister Zeke and get the church email for that information. Prayer request, we ask you to please pray for our nation. Please uh, pray for revival and also praying for our church and all the saints. And I ask where you are right now to please take these needs up with me. Lord, I just want to give you the glory and the honor, Jesus. And I just want to thank you for being a great and a loving God that you are, Jesus. I thank you for taking care of us in our times of needs and in our times of joy, Lord God. I thank you for allowing us to know your truth and know how great and mighty you are, Jesus. I thank you for bringing us all together, even through a virtual lesson at this time, Lord God, that we can still hear your word and spread your gospel throughout this nation. Lord God, I pray that you allow revival to happen in the cities of Johnstown, Indiana, Holsapo, Jerome, and all the surrounding areas, Lord God. Allow revival to happen and pour out onto the front porches and into the houses of every individual in these areas, Lord God. Let your spirit move throughout their heart and their souls, Lord God. Let them see how great you are and the things you can do, Lord God, if they put their trust into you. Let them see that you can heal and you can provide no matter what the circumstance may be, Lord God. That you are always there by their side. All they got to do is call out and reach to you, Lord God. Lord, I ask you to please look over the saints of this church, Lord God. Continue blessing them and strengthening them every day, Lord God. As we might not be together in person, Lord God, but let our souls and our spirits and our mind be together, Lord God. Let us all praise you as we all, as we would if we were together, Lord God. Allow the praise to pour out into our houses, Lord God. To let your mighty spirit move and let it work, Lord God. Let it do miracles that it's able to do. Not let us hold it back, Lord God, but let it sweep through us, Lord God. Lord, I give you the glory and the honor, Jesus. In your great name I pray. Amen. Your
in this place. Let's magnify it. Lord Jesus, you are great and greatly to be praised. I worship you and I bless your holy name, Jesus, in this place today. I give you all the praise that you deserve, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone. It's good to uh, be back with you again to study the word of the Lord. Um, right now we are uh, looking at um, you know our spiritual warfare and what we are facing today um, and the spirit of our world and, and how that it affects us. Again, I just want to re-emphasize that when we see in the Word of God uh, and we mention uh, worldly um, worldliness, uh, we're mentioning, mentioning basically the fallen state of man, uh, the world as it is, and um, uh, the natural tendency for man uh, to follow after the sins of the flesh and the sins that um, uh, that scripture says so easily beset us or um, in other words become part of us and uh, are a big part of our lives and so that's you know we have to uh, look at this I want to I want to uh, start here with prayer uh, let's pray together Lord Jesus we thank you for your blessings your goodness we pray that you administer to our hearts and lives and Lord that you would help us be that what we need to be and Lord Jesus we give you praise for it and Lord God we battle Lord Jesus we battle the flesh we we battle spiritual wickedness that wants the flesh uh, to to win and we pray dear God that you would help us and Lord Jesus strengthen us and make us aware Lord God of this great battle and how that you have won the victory uh, for us and we give you the praise in Jesus name amen and so as we look here we were we were looking in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and looking at verses 4 and 5 and uh, uh, again uh, just uh, going over this uh, let me read these verses again and I'm going to read them in the New Living Translation uh, we use God's mighty weapons not worldly weapons to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Okay, um, and teaching here is mentioned as part of our, our weaponry um, to capture the rebellious thoughts of uh, of the human condition and so and in other words uh, bring it down to uh, the level of where it should be instead of uh, in other words underneath our feet instead of what we see and do and partake in in our life uh, sin is a um, is you know very powerful within us so our spiritual warfare again is is looking at these influence we also looked uh, into the scripture uh, we looked at Daniel and how he had prayed and how that there is uh, spiritual powers that are fighting against us uh, receiving any kind of revelation from the Lord, um, any kind of good news, any any kind of thing that tells us what God intends for us and intends for humanity. So here was a prophecy. Here was a you know uh, 
something that was going to happen in the future and it was part of the present and God's bringing light and understanding to that and that was um, that was important uh, uh, to the Lord but it, the enemy was uh, quite upset at the message and um, was already at work uh, as scripture lets us know uh, in in influence influencing the Grecians um, to do what they were going to do and and uh, the destruction of 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 the city of Jerusalem in other words uh, Judah uh, the southern kingdom by Babylon um, had basically uh, uh, changed and destroyed the hopes of a lot of the Jewish people and um, the idea of uh, ever returning just didn't seem to be there and going back to the place and worship uh, in the places that um, they did in the past and we find that uh, that hopelessness was there but the Lord was given a message that something else was going to happen and that there was going to be a uh, a return and um, the enemy didn't like this because it um, Israel was declared the children of God and uh, anything that is declared that uh, Satan's going to fight against most um, uh, with the most vigor uh, then he was going to fight against Hinduism or anything else that is uh, or any other uh, false uh, gods that are out there and uh, paganism that is uh, out there today uh, it is our um, it is our job to realize that we're not in this alone that the Lord is with us and uh, Daniel needed to be reminded of that also that the Lord was with him uh, his fasting and, and prayers uh, were strategic in um, uh, bringing uh, the answer but they were uh, also uh, it was God's intent uh, to do this um, so in other words to, to give the revelation to um, the visions the dreams and all these things that came to Daniel during the time of his of his ministry um, so we are uh, looking at this and, and we're going to um, uh, move on from this point and uh, again uh, we're going to uh, scripture about you know uh, looking at spiritual warfare and how Paul wrote about it um, and most of the you know uh, epistles are written by Paul and um, he writes similar things and gives us it gives us a little bit more perspective on uh, what he is talking about but uh, I want to I want to again uh, put in into this that teaching is a big part of our sports spiritual warfare teaching the things of the Lord um, this is a this is a big part and it shouldn't be um, taken out of our uh, arsenal and put to the side and just you know uh, resting everything on on prayer um, and uh, you know prayer is a vital part and prayer is very very important and prayer is I can't I don't want to end under emphasize prayer but I also want us there is an active part 
that we can do um, that can capture the rebellious hearts and minds of people is by teaching those who really don't understand this. And that is our, that is our job. And, uh, you know, home Bible studies uh, is spiritual warfare. <laughs> Whether you want to put it in that context, but uh, Paul writes about how he's capturing, how he's, um, how he's doing this. In other words, how he's capturing the rebellious thoughts. Okay, all right, our rebellious thoughts are, are stuff that, our flesh comes up with and is and the world around us and uh, the influences of demonic powers have um, uh, has brought to the media and has brought to um, uh, uh, basically the, our everyday everyday interactions with people and the way that they speak and talk um, what we what we interact with in this world is most of the time uh, re rebelliousness against the Lord. Um, there's going to be a day when that is going to be uh, the opposite. When the Lord uh, returns and sets up His government on this earth, uh, this. Um, what we're going to, what mankind is going to experience is the presence and uh, righteousness and, you know, uh, what a wonderful world that would be. And it is, it is the desire, it is the desire of all those who walk with the Lord in battle and in this at the present to be able to be a part of that in the future is uh, significant in our in our understanding of uh, of what we're fighting for, and we're trying to get more and more people um, that have been duped by sin, that have been. Um, uh, encouraged to sin more and say that it's not sin and who have been told a lies uh, by um, the media and those that are around them and we have to be careful that we do not allow these lies to influence us and keep us quiet uh, keep us from doing what the Lord wants us to do and uh, this is part of our spiritual warfare and uh, many times we can fight these things uh, through through prayer uh, many times it's just uh, a problem of unbelief and uh, we have to you know fight against that um, over the years, I I find I find uh, people making excuses, and um, in telling lies to themselves to, how can I say, make it all right for what they've done wrong, um, and uh, point the finger and blame everybody else uh, other than themselves, <laughs> and you know. Uh, if my, you know, uh, a spouse would be this way or uh, do this, then I would be, be, you know, more of this, or I wouldn't have done what I done, or I wouldn't have said what I said. You know, that's, you know, that is not dealing with the problem. You know, the problem is that we are fighting a spiritual warfare, and many times that war is fought within ourselves. And we have to acknowledge that. We have to repent of that thinking. And that's going to have to be done on a regular basis because the influences of our society, the influences that we see in uh, uh 
you know, amongst government and and uh, all these people in the media uh, want to cast the blame on everybody else. Well, you know, uh, he is, you know, <clears throat> he uh, killed this person because um, blah, blah, blah. All right. And push the responsibility off. Um, there's things that we have to repent of. And unless we repent of them, we're going to find ourselves caught up into the um, uh, the rhetoric that's around us. And we will be pointing the blame on everybody else, just like uh, the media. Okay, they want to blame Christianity for the... Uh, you know, for people feeling bad, or from for people um, that want to live in um, their various sins, um, uh, they want to live in homosexuality, or they want to live in their transgenderism, and you know, they do all kinds of things. Uh, they 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 want to live in adultery. They want to live in fornication. Um, they want to live in alcoholism and drug abuse and all these different things. And, um, you know, believe me, these are great battles. And I'm, I'm not saying, but we have to repent of these ourselves. We have to take some ownership because our spiritual warfare is going to be worthless until we do. And we allow God to come in and uh, begin to help us with this. And that we uh, get the teachings that we need. And we hear what we need to hear. Uh, and uh, help us and chide us and uh, correct us uh, in what we are doing wrong. Uh, and that's important. Okay. You know, you know, when we were growing up and uh, we went to school and we, we um, uh, you know, answered a question wrong, you know, and put Abraham Lincoln as our first president or something like that. So, you know, just because we said that and just because we th think that doesn't make it true, okay? Uh, no, you know, George Washington is our first president, okay? Uh, uh, no, you got that wrong, okay? Oh, no, no, I, 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 you know, I, I know, you know, it's Abraham Lincoln. I, I you know, uh, I'm sure that's, you know, that's what I, I seen. No, no, you're wrong, okay? We need correction, to get it right and to understand uh, our world, to understand who and what's behind the world that we live in right now and uh, who is influence in media. It's the prince and power of the air. Again, I, I will emphasize this, okay, um, the media is, is uh, basically brought to us through uh, what we quote unquote say the airwaves okay um, and basically that's that's kind of the truth um, uh, electronic singles are sent and they travel by various means whether uh, by satellite or um, across the ground, uh, more like FM, or, you know, uh, AM, which which bounces, you know, off the atmosphere and back to the earth, you know. Um, these, these things are constantly out there. And, you know, we get the Prince and Power of the Air um, who is uh, in influencing these. And we need to realize that, um, we're not uh, that we are fighting a spiritual war how it influences us how it influences our home 
in our in our immediate family we have a responsibility for that and uh, we need to take that responsibility and begin to fight the spiritual warfare uh, in that place but we're gonna have to fight it in ourselves first okay and that is important okay um, in Ephesians um, <clears throat> We're going to look at Ephesians 6, in which we've studied before, uh, a, and uh, verse 10, we're going to go to, And a final word, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of, uh, and in his mighty power, this is NLT again, put on all God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against the strategies of of the devil for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the in the heavenly places okay verse 13 therefore put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the evil in the time of evil then after the battle you will still be standing firm okay what is being portrayed here um, we're going to need we're going to need some things that are going to help us stand against this and and he maps it out as a soldier and he maps it out as uh, using an illustration that uh, these people would have seen uh, on a regular basis uh, around them uh, the Roman occupancy of um, uh, of Eastern Europe and um, uh, how can I say uh, West Asia was was quite significant um, and the uh, the presence of Roman garrisons uh, throughout uh, the conquered world was something they they would see on again on a regular basis reminding them that uh, they are under the authority of Rome and so he's using something that is practical uh, and that they can look at and every time they would see it um, it you know it, it should remind them of what they need to have on themselves okay um, or uh, be a part of them so that they can uh, deal with the rebellion that uh, that would stir up against the Roman occupancy um, okay and he's likening this to the rebellion that that would you know stir up in our hearts and lives and um, uh, also you know stir up in the church as a whole and see we're not just fighting this about for ourselves we are fighting this um, for the church that God has bled and died for and that he has given his spirit to and we are accountable for what we do with what the Lord has given us and so um, though we have conquered through the blood of Jesus Christ, though we have conquered um, the uh, the power of sin over us uh, through the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ in us, by you know how 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 did that was that applied? Well, we repented of our sins. We were baptized in His name. We received the Holy Ghost. Um, this this put us in 
uh, to the church of a living God, and then we overcome sin. When we first received the Holy Ghost, um, there was such a great freedom that we felt, and uh, a washing, and the, a bunch of junk that came off off of us. But because of that victory, doesn't mean um, that uh, you know everything's from that point on is is going to be. Uh, you know, in the clouds and everything's just wonderful from that point. Uh, just like the Roman occupancy, um, you're going to have stirrups. Uh, you're going to have people that uh, that are going to rise up, and you got to put down that rebellion. And this is what he's depicting here by uh, giving this um, example and. Uh, we don't we don't see that today and uh, so uh, it, it's not how can I say um, the, you know the the same uh, in respects uh, to our um, present day observations <laughs> or what we see on a regular basis and so I'm, I'm trying to put this out here that it is something that we're going to have to take extra time to think about and to look at and to understand um, how important it is that once we have victory, you've got to occupy. And to occupy, you have to fight against insurgency okay and you have to fight against rebellion all right um because there's going to be things that's going to try to enter your heart there's going to be uh you know influences demonic influences that are going to try to influence your heart the flesh in itself is is going to be influenced by the demonic forces to do uh what it had done in the past and uh, all these things, and uh, there's going to be reoccurring problem areas, um, just like there was in the time of the Roman occupancy. There were some areas that were, uh, to say, hotter than others when it came to conflict um, uh, due to uh, what was going on. And uh, basically, uh, Jerusalem was one of those hot spots. Uh, uh, due to uh, those who were um, trying to raise up another Jewish nation uh, to destroy uh, the Roman occupiers. And so um, uh, this was very prevalent. And the, uh, uh, and, uh, the Jews in, in Jerusalem uh, area had had, how can I say, uh, had gathered many resources and much wealth to be able to do this. And we do see it happening. And the rebellion uh, that happened uh, before the destruction of uh, Jerusalem by the Romans in a in a in a way that was um, to forever, you know, uh, destroy. So you know the temple was a big part of that iconicism that would give them the you know the encouragement uh, uh, to be uh, rebellious and. Uh, the wealth that was around them in Herod's uh, Herod's palace, um, uh, and again the immense wealth that was centered around that part of the world, um, uh, they were there was a staging going on, and we find it coming to a head near uh, before 70 A.D., and uh, the war went on for about. Uh, three to four years and um, and uh, many of the Jews retreated to 
the um, uh, one of Herod's retreat areas, and we know it uh, in history as Masada. And uh, they held out there for a very long period of time because of the mass uh, uh, resources that they had uh, had. But you know, eventually, uh, the Romans um, uh, basically cut them off from uh, new supply chains and they were able to build embankments to um, basically a, a land bridge to get to Masada and um, and uh, conquer this rebellion. And so in in that light, let me speak to you that this is what we're facing. This is the kind of spiritual warfare that we're facing. We can have, um, we can allow the devil uh, to encourage us, uh, or the demonic forces and the spiritual forces that are out there um, through various means. And I'm telling you, they work through the media, it, it works through magazines. It, it uh, you know, of course, magazines part of the media, but um, all these, all these things, the media is the biggest part of. Uh, of our everyday um, consumption and of uh, of what we see and hear, and then uh, in the workplace, work around people who um, you know who talk about things that you know a Christian, a, a godly Christian, shouldn't even talk about, and uh, they joke about things that a godly Christian shouldn't joke about. Uh, and their, you know, their mouths are, are, are filthy, um, and these things do play on our minds because we're getting this bombardment. And so, part of our warfare is, in other words, it has to be conscious and it has to be something that we put on. In other words. We consciously put it on, and there's reasons why we put it on, and there's an importance behind it. And so, um, uh, we see here again that we're. Uh, this is reiterated what we see mentioned uh, in the book of Daniel, how that the uh, angel of the Lord had uh, come to give the message, and that. Uh, how Michael had come to help, and you know, this is, uh, and I'm talking about an angel, okay, had come to to help uh, to make that possible. Um, now, is does that mean that God struggles to do um, His work? Um, God uses the device of man uh, to deal with man. Um, if it was just the idea of sending angels uh, to tell us everything that we need to know, um, that is outside the framework or the authority system that God has set up. He is, uh, the Lord is very um, legal in his ways and he is not going to change those ways uh, because he has given man some responsibility here. So, you know, people, I've heard people, well, why doesn't God just you know wipe out evil and this will be it and you know so we don't have to fight like we have to fight well uh, there is there is the struggle that man has chosen sin over over God and so God's not going to go past 
that man has to move towards God and then God will empower th those who move towards him to continually be empowered and the closer and the closer that we get to the Lord the greater the empowerment uh, uh, will be and that we will be able to handle uh, what's facing us and he will empower us and work through us as it was planned in the beginning okay well I'm going to be closing here and we're going to go on uh, with this spiritual warfare again uh, continue to pray uh, get on your knees um, humble yourself before the Lord and talk to him speak to him and allow him to deal with uh, your hearts if you can't get on your knees due to physical problems well you know do it in your heart and you know uh, sit in a chair uh, stand up walk around whatever it may be uh, and allow the presence of the Lord to encourage you and and help you become the um, the occupying power of God's victory within your life and so um, let's pray Lord Jesus we pray Lord God that you would help us we falter many times in our walk with you and Lord Jesus as we see this the spiritual influences Lord we must fight Lord God in our lives we must put on the whole armor that Paul had talked about to teach us what it takes to be able to stand in this day of evil that we live in and Lord there are many influences and the world around us is telling us not to speak up against sin and not to speak up against all this unrighteousness but Lord your word says that these things are wrong and that we must tell the good news of the gospel that they they shouldn't live this way and they don't need to live that way and that God can give you them peace and strength and and help them in their walk with the Lord Lord let us be examples and help us Lord Jesus to, to be examples of your victory and Lord God that we would be good soldiers Lord we give you praise and glory for it in Jesus name amen and amen God bless you.